Cole starts into the back nine on day two. Second shot here at the 10th with the pin 23 on five from the left hand side. There's water at the front of this green, but anywhere on the fairway won't come into play for these players today. Yeah, and that flag's just up on a little shelf there, and there wasn't much behind it before a bunker comes into place. It's tough to get it all the way back up to that pin. Cole starts looking to start the back nine with a birdie. It's a tall order, this one. Uphill quite slow up the green for Cole Sartz. Just needs a bit of hitting that, he might have made that. So he'll tap that one in, stay one under today, four under in total. Shot 69 yesterday, Nicholas Cole Sartz. Drop back a hold to this uh, long par three and Nicholas Cole Sartz. Almost identical to his Belgian yeah. colleague a few moments ago. Of course, as ball managed to hang up right of the 11th, this makes this shot an awful lot easier. Pitch and run with the sand down, trying to keep it low, the hands ahead of it, driving it forward. Big hitting uh, Nicholas Colsarts at the par 5 12th. Out with his driver. Yep. Runs right down by the side of the ocean and just trying to move it a little bit from <laughs> right to left and get a big kick out of it like that. Look at that. Coming down on that white side. I've seen too many drives down there. Get your yardage book out, Andrew. How far is it to those cross bunkers? Well, you have a reputation as a good wind player. <laughs> uh, that's a nice little pep talk. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't mind playing wind. Uh, if I, I like to maneuver the ball. I, it's kind of fairly easy for me to know pretty much what needs to be done uh, but it's blown pretty hard uh, the course gets a bit firmer I mean it's uh, it's blowing hard enough to uh, to make it actually pretty tough uh, I'm feeling with regard to your clubs have you you have made a few changes within the bag I mean, what what kind of changes were they uh, well I separated from who I was with uh, last season uh, for various reasons I I did. I did play it very well like that um, in the past, um, and just because I felt a bit more freedom in my choices in whatever I wanted to use, um, and it seemed to have paid off. Actually, I mean, I started to play a little bit better uh, at the end of the summer last year when I when I started to change stuff or tinker with different different things, uh, and I ended up winning in France uh, and feeling. Like I said, you know, that sense of freedom is, is, is quite important for me uh, in whatever I do, uh, not just golf, you know, in, uh, you know, McGinley said once that I was a free-spirited player and uh, <laughs> I'm kind of heading that way again. So you're tapping into your essence with regard to your weapons? Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, it's no coincidence that you see a lot of guys doing that now. Uh, uh, you know, we play for a lot of money and, and, and uh, you know, you, you, you'd rather go to battle with the, uh, with the equipment that you feel the most comfortable with. It's a pleasure watching you golf. Continue. Thank you. <laughs> it's the voices, Richard. It is. Reach that stage. Colson after the big drive. His second to the par 5, 12. Wonderful shot. Great control. So he's got that for an eagle three. I just showed you how far down he was. He's only going in there with a wedge. It's just ridiculous. Colesarts for an eagle. Just to move to minus six. Oh, good chance gone there. So he'll move to minus five. Playing with Andy Sullivan. He's a, a couple under Andy Sullivan and Min Woo Lee. He's at six over. He's struggling in that three ball. Well, with a fairly lofty club in his hand, he won't be very pleased with that. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a lovely place actually here, isn't it? It's a lot different to... It's not like just being right out in the desert. It really isn't. 
Cole Sartz, poor tee shot really for him. Probably would have had a gap wedge in his hand or a wedge. That's not too bad. There you go. Scorecard paints no pictures. Poor tee shot, great putt. Cole Sartz to minus six. A little bit uphill, second shot here for Cole Sartz at the 14th. Lovely shot, Cole oh, yeah. that to move to minus seven. And Cole starts up ahead for his birdie. And he's done it. Cole starts to minus seven. Oh, Lynx golf, I always used to love Lynx golf, it was great, and a lot of golfers like Lynx golf. They like it when it's not all about the putting, you know? Yeah, about shaping the ball and getting it in play. Pin on the left-hand side of the 15th here. Cole starts if you're trying to aim this 25 feet right in the flag, and just try and move it back from right to left if you can. And hit that the other way. Cut that up into the right to left breeze, which stalls the ball. And it's difficult from this distance to get a sweet straight, a tiny little sweet spot on the potter. Why well, you see some of them using a hybrid or a three wood? It's such a big stroke. Sometimes it's difficult to judge the pace, but in this instance, Cole Sartz has almost done it to perfection. That's a lovely touch. Cole Sartz makes his part. Difficult hold, safely negotiated. Comes well back today. 31 on. Just tucked from the edge of the right hand side of this green so we'll try and fly it if we can all the way like that plenty of spin and a birdie chance coming up for Cole Sartz beautiful stuff I think from around about August September last year that's the one thing that's improved in his game is putts from four and five feet Back to the 17th. Now, aiming at the middle of the green here, Cole starts trying to cut it in from left to right. Very nearly. Maybe the breeze has just died down a little bit. It's a birdie chance there, though, for Nicholas Cole starts. This is, well, he's got to put up a little slope here, hasn't he? So it's the outside chance. Yeah, it's a little slope. That's a good roll, goodness me. He gave it everything. Feeling confident, but whoa, it's one of those coming back. They are trying to grow the game of golf here in Amman off the back of this uh, tournament. We've had some clinics with some juniors involved. Who knows? He might have a former, uh, former future Amman champion. Really nice comeback part there from Nicholas Colsarts for part. Yeah, that was. I was watching the stroke. There was. Mm, looks like he's going to finish in 72 at the end. Back to the tee. Left hand bunker, a little bit left of that actually, with a bit of fade, and run out of room. And it'll depend on the line. Interesting thing will be, it looks like you may end up on an upslope. Here's Cole Sartz, as you said, off the upslope at 18. Uh, we started that left. Into and right to left. Yeah, that's where he started and it stayed there. He was trying to get it to move a little left to right. I don't think that's plugged. Colesart's ball hasn't plugged. Needs to keep the loft on the club here, though. He did. Played it beautifully. <laughs> Lovely shot from Nicholas Colesart. Half up for Colesart's uh, good up and down on the final hole. That's two or three of those down the stretch that he's holding. Yeah, he has he's a good one. He's holds, yes, that's what uh, that's improved a lot in his putting. He used to be a bit iffy with sort of four, five footers, but he seems to firm that all up. So, all adding up to 69, 67, eight under going into Saturday. Nico, 67. How good did you feel out there with all the wind? We spoke earlier, but you seem to relish the challenge. 
I was a little bit in the zone actually. I was playing shots after shots. So I didn't really, you know, I had the, what we call the good eyes today. Uh, none of, there's not really any shot that really frightened me, even though there was a, there's a couple, you know, that are pretty difficult with this wind. Uh, but we played we played similar wind last year. I mean, I think last year was a pretty good warm up. We played similar conditions. Uh, so uh, you know, I kind of used what we did last year for today's round. Great par putt on 17, by the way, because. That seemed very pacey. Uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of knew like up that ridge it was going to be pretty pacey uh, after the top of the crown. But uh, it's it's one of them. All of a sudden, you leave uh, you know five short, and then you get another downhiller for par. So uh, no, I'm I'm I've, I'm actually quite happy with uh, with the way with my stride. You know, I just kept playing holes after holes and uh, without really putting myself uh, in a lot of pressure situations. So McGinley is right. You have a free spirit. Continue playing with it. Uh, I mean, you know what? I, you know, winning last year and, and knowing that you have an exemption and everything just makes your life a, a, a lot easier. You, you, you take weeks uh, for what they are, and uh, you don't really pay attention to uh, where should I be. You know about others or how scores are moving. You just uh, worry about your own game. It's a, it's a, it's a very comfortable situation. To you're, you're very much in the business end of the tournament here, no man. Best of luck over the weekend. Thank you. To watch another European tour video click here or to subscribe click here